Okay, so we're going to look at our track events for our Sports Hall Athletics final. So we've got the imaginary high stepper. So the high stepper is the thing with the wedges, which I'm sure all you guys have seen before. But I know that you guys are not going to have a high stepper at home. So we have used just, just line markers on the floor to kind of mark out our high stepper so that Emily can put her feet in between each marker. So for this, she wants his fast feet. So just like you would with a ladder, okay, say if you do some football dream, drills, you want the fast feet in between each one and you don't want to be stepping on the marker or missing any markers. The amount of times in our sports hall heats that we have to put on time for people because they're missing a wedge. So actually it's better to make sure that your foot is in each wedge. Okay, so she wants to not step on them. All right, and then she wants to make sure that her foot has gone into every gap. Okay, so that's our high stepper. And then we're going to move on to our hurdle. So anything that you guys can kind of prop up, just, just make sure that if you were to run into it or knock into it, it's not going to hurt you. So our hurdles here, they just fall over like that. So if you're practicing at home, just make sure whatever you are using, it doesn't matter if you run into it or fall into it. Okay, so whenever you're approaching the hurdle, again, depending on what age you are, will depend on how big or small it is in relation to you. So whenever you're going over your hurdle, then normally your right in hand, so because I'm right-handed, that leg of mine is going to go over first, okay? So I put my right leg over first, and we want to be running over the hurdle, okay? We don't want to be stopping before this hurdle. We want to make it a nice movement. So hopefully when, it, when Emily does her demonstration, we shouldn't see her stop here. We should see here what we call attacking the hurdle. All right, and in your sports hall, you'll have at least two, depending on what event it is that you do. So don't take off too close to the hurdle, but also don't take off all the way back here. Okay, so my right leg will go over first, and my left leg will join. And again, you want to think about it being quick. So the quicker you can get over that hurdle, the obviously the faster time it is that you will get. So we're going to watch Emily, hopefully, to be able to get her feet in everyone and make sure that she attacks this herd nice and quick. Okay, so when you're changing over the baton, when you're being the person that the baton is being passed to, it's really important that you trust your partner. So we see a lot of the time, people look in. So it's all right to look, okay, to see where they are. But if you're setting off running, you need to be able to trust your partner. They can, can communicate with you to pass the baton. So you don't want to be running, looking at them like this and holding your hand like this. Okay, so on the demonstration before, Emily had her hand. Okay, so we should be running facing forward, so facing towards the board with my arm out like this. Okay, we shouldn't be stood there like this asking for the baton. Okay, so we're not going to set off like that, are we? So we don't want to be running sideways. Okay, we want to be running straight ahead. And it's your uh, partner's communication. So if they think that they're not going to pass the baton to you, that's when they tell you need to tell you to slow down. Okay, so you need to trust your partner and rely on your partner and that's the quickest and most effective way of passing your baton. So make sure you're facing forward, you've got that clear target, okay, with your hand, clear target like this, okay, you should be running and your partner should be communicating. And as soon as you feel that baton come into your hand, that's when you know that you can go and sprint towards that board. Okay, so our next event is going to be the chest push. So we just have a basketball here. Okay, so in the actual competition, you guys will be using, using a medicine ball. So depending on how old you are, depending on how heavy it is. So for the primaries, is 1K, and for the high schools, it's a little bit heavier. Okay, so with our medicine ball, or whatever ball you have at home, so basketball, football, netball, anything like that, it's going to go from the chest, because it's called a chest push. Okay, so we want to be throwing it from here. So, Emily, can you stand at the line for me and just chest push that ball to the wall? Now, in sports hall, you can't jump with the ball because that would be a no throw, but you can use your legs, and a lot of people forget about this. So, again, the power wants to come from our legs. If we're just stood there like this, we're not using our own body at all. So, depending on where you feel most comfortable, you can either stand short width apart or one in front of the other. I would recommend this one if you're a little bit more. So as long as our feet don't leave the floor, we can still use our legs to give us a bit more power. So with the ball here, we're going to go down and then push up, but making sure that your feet stay on the floor in case so you don't jump. So hopefully this will give you a lot more power. Good. And energy is going to be well, but please make sure that you follow through. Okay? So you don't want to just finish here because you want your arms stretched out as wide as they can. Like you'll say goodbye to the ball. Alright, so the next one is our elbows. So a lot of people automatically do their elbows like this. Now I know some of our coaches don't really agree with elbows like this because they're called chicken wings. Alright, so if you can have your elbows here next to your body and then pushing from there, it actually gives you more power. Okay, so this time elbows a little further into your body and then push straight back to the wall. 
your accuracy because if you're throwing it to the side you're not getting as much accuracy as possible okay so the next event is going to be javelin so this is what it's going to look like uh, in your sports ball athletics final okay so emma's going to throw the javelin first of all and then we'll talk about how she can progress so there we go so we're going to start from behind the red line of the weight so if you hold your javelin it needs to be at the point where it balances so if you hold it here for example when you throw it it's going to go down and if you hold it here and you throw it it's going to go like that okay so the first thing you need to do is find the point of balance so this one's quite central but sometimes it's a little bit further up depending on what kind of javelin that you have okay so for Emily's next throw she's going to find her point of balance on the javelin okay and then she'll be able to throw it and hopefully it will fly through the air so there we go Okay, so next point is our back arm, so Emily's left handed, so our back arm needs to start nice and straight. So we see this a lot in PA and this is what Emily's just done, and she's just started with her arm here, okay? So if you start from here, you're losing this power and this momentum. So we should, so we should start with our back arm here, and then it should then bend as we twist our hips, it then obviously goes in front of us, okay? Whereas if you're starting from here, you've only got a little bit of motion, so you should be able to get the javelin up a lot further, by this extra, extra momentum. Okay, so this time find your point of balance and then your arm needs to start straight at the back. That's it. Good. And then the last one is we're going to focus on whereabouts we want to aim the javelin. Okay, so for us we're in a we're in a hall. Alright, so we've got some red lines on the wall here which really help. If you're at home or if you're at school, you can put a little marker on, uh, on the wall. So for Emily, looking around here, we're aiming for the javelin to be above this line. Okay, so we always say just above where your height is. So if you kind of stand next to the wall, you want it just above where, where you're stood. That's where you want to be aiming for for your javelin. Because if you're throwing it down, it's not going to go very far. If you're throwing it too far up, it's just going to go up and then come straight back down. Okay, so find your point of balance so from your line again. So find your point of balance. Arm straight to the back, and then we're going to aim above the red line. That's your target. Lovely. Stop. <laughs> okay, so our next event is going to be the speed bounce. So obviously, we've got an actual speed bounce here, so this is what it will look like in your sports hall finals. Okay, but you can, if you're at home, you could use anything like a tie of clothes that you can kind of put into a little bit of a sausage shape or a pillow or anything like that. Because you don't want it too wide because you do want to be able to jump over it. Alright, but just a little bit of height just so you can practice the technique of the speed bar. So we'll give Emily, if you want to do about eight, right, and then we'll kind of break it down and see how she can improve her. Kind of keeping our body above the wedge, whereas Emily then was kind of taking her whole body over each side of the wedge. Okay, so if we talk about swivel hips, yeah, we want to move a bit more like that. This is really difficult to do, but we'll see how you got. So try and keep, yeah. So just your feet were the last one before that time, and then you want to try and keep your upper body kind of over the wedge, and you're all the way moving your lower body. Okay, so swiveling your hips will help with that. We'll see how you got. Alright, it is really difficult. Go on. <laughs> okay, another thing as well, as well as doing it, which is again really hard to do, this is probably the most technical one that is that you need to do in sports of, is where your eyes need to go, because we talk about this in everything that we do. So if our eyes are forward, okay, and we don't want to be looking down really, so either if our eyes are forward or forward within the, um, on the floor, that's a little bit better than us looking down. So if we're looking down at our feet, okay, our upper body is kind of over, or right, and our head, which is the heaviest part of our body, actually might be from forward. So next time you do it, you kind of look around, 
Swivel hips, think about where you place your feet, all right, and keeping your balance to make sure that you're not hitting that wedge. If you look in front of you, it will help a lot more with your control. Okay, so our next event is going to be the five strides. So this is if you guys are in year three and four. Okay, so with the five strides, it's just five big steps. Okay, so just think about a leap really. So it's just five leaps. Now this one isn't four steps in a jump, we see that quite a lot. And if you do that in the final, unfortunately you get a no jump. So the event isn't called four steps in a jump, it's called five strides, okay? So it needs to be five strides, all right? So let's watch Emily do it first of all, and then we'll kind of look how she can improve her steps. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, so as you can see then, she did five strides, yeah? Not four and a jump. So. We're going to start from our red line again. And if you've got markers at home, if you've got someone that can help you, you can put down these markers for each stride. Okay, that's going to take more than one attempt because you won't be able to put down all five markers at once. All right, but this is really good to mark because then you can know how far it is that you guys can jump. Because in the competition, you have to choose what number to start from. So whether that's five, that's six or seven. Whereas if you know how far you can jump because you've practiced it, you will know what line to start on because you'll know how far it is that you can jump, okay? So this time, I want you to think about when you go up with your leg, we're going to do a kind of chlorine action on the floor. So when we go up, we want our leg out like this, okay? So if we're just going up and down, yeah, we're not getting a lot of length out of us, okay? So when you go up, reach in for the floor, okay? So again, she's going to do the five strides. Three, four. Okay, so she got so much more distance then, okay, just from bringing that foot up. So if you kind of think, toes up like this, okay, that will allow you to claw the floor to get a lot more distance, all right? Do it again, so from the red line. Okay, this time I want you to use your arms, okay? So however that feels naturally to you, all right? So again, we talked about this before in our other jumping events, using our arms gives us that momentum, and that will look different for everyone, okay? So just use your arms, how you feel most comfortable and whatever comes naturally, okay? Fantastic, so this time, before, I don't know if you can see, before, she managed to just get to this line here, but she has got that a little bit further this time, again, just with the arms giving us that momentum, okay? Let's do one small from our red line. Okay, this time, I want you to think about having powerful legs. Okay, so if we think we have powerful legs, we're more likely to go further. All right, so I want you to think how big can you make the movement? Okay, so each individual step, although they're all joined together, they're actually five different steps or five different phases. So you want to think about how big can I make the first one? How big can I make the second one? Okay, so using those legs, using those arms, and let's see how far you can get. So my target here is to get over that red line. Okay, so whenever you're ready, think about how big you can make each one. to red line so we just get a tape measure out i don't know how long that is but say that's nine meters okay so emily knows that in the competition she would start on the number nine and she would have in her head that she could make that distance she could make that nine meters because she knows that she's practiced it and done it at home okay so our next event is going to be the triple jump so our triple jump consists of three phases it's a hop a step and a jump so we just need something to measure. So I've got three different cones here, three different coloured cones. So at home you can use socks, anything that, that you can use to measure the three different phases, okay? And we're going to break it down first. So we've got a red line that Emma's going to stand behind. So that's our starting line. Now we've got a standing triple jump, so we can't have that run up like you might do outside. So Emma's going to choose a foot to start with. Here's the left one. Yeah, so she's going to hop on that foot and I'm going to pop it. So remember, when we do our hop set jump, our first action is a hop. 
So it's same leg to same leg. So Emma's going to start, Emma's starting on her left. She's going to go left foot to left foot. Okay, we see a lot of people starting and then going onto the other, other leg, which is a step, step jump, which isn't correct. So the best way I can use to describe it is whichever leg you're going to start with, to pop that behind your marker and then lift this one up here. And this one isn't going to go down on the floor yet, okay? So my right leg like this, I'm going to lift this one, I'm just going to go right leg to right leg like that. Okay, so this one doesn't, my left leg doesn't need to be used. So Emma's jumps or hops, should I say, on her left leg. She's now going to step onto the other leg as far as she can. And I'll pop the marker down from the top. There we go, so that's her step. So she's going from left leg to left leg. So for her step, she's having to go from left to right. So this is where the other leg now comes in play. So our step is just a leap like that. Okay, so it's different legs for our second phase. For our first phase, she's going to go on her right leg, she's going to jump on two feet and land on two feet, just slightly along the jump So, good job, fantastic, and come on, mark it down. Okay, so this is what we call our baseline markers. So, this is what Emily's done each individual phase, whereas now she's going to put them all together. So, you should see that she gets further now, okay, because she's got that momentum from the beginning. So, what she's going to do going to do her triple jump and I'll move her markers so then she knows where that she's aiming from. So let's see if she can get any further. part of your body. You want to be thinking about where you're looking, okay, so we, well, for us we've got a, a line on the wall here, so we want to be looking at that second red line, okay, and we want to be keeping our body nice and tall as well to help with the control. So Ellie's going to have one last go, one, nice and easy, all the way through the movement without stopping, let's see if she can beat the toes. That's what it's Yeah, so now I can move around these toes like this, and she's got further on her step, and she's got further on her foot. Okay, so now Emily has something to work towards. So at home, you can measure your goals or whatever it is that you put down. You know that that's what you need to do on the day. Okay, so the next event following on from javelin is the other throwing event, which is shot put. Okay, so we have just got a bean bag, so you can use a bean bag, a tennis ball, any kind of little ball uh, is fine, or even just bunch up all the socks. Okay, depending on where you are. So you just kind of need a marker on the floor. So I've just got a marker here and I'm going to throw against my wall. And again, if you've just got a big bike, you can obviously do this in your house too. So firstly, which hand do you right with and the hand that you throw with? So I am right-handed. So to start with, we're just going to focus on the pushing action that we need to do. So I'm going to start about two feet behind the line. And I'm going to put my bean bag into my neck like this. So a lot of the time we see people throwing it out here and throwing it out here and unfortunately it's a no throw. So we're thinking about our elbow being nice and high to keep the shot put in our neck. And all we're going to do, just standing like this, we're just going to push like that. Okay, and we're aiming for above the red line. So Emily's now going to try that as well. So we want it in our neck, we want our elbow nice and high. I'm just going to push it above the red line. Side. Okay? So for the next one, I'm going to have my two feet apart this time. So I'm going to face sideways on. So because I'm right handed, I'm going to be this way. Okay? You'll be able to see it from the back when Emily does hers. So feet just a little bit uh, wider than the shoulder width. Again, your bean bag or whatever it is that you've got is going to be in your neck and this elbow still needs to remain nice and high. Okay? This time we can have a little bit of movement in the hips. All right, and then we can also be moving our feet too, because that helps with the movement, okay? So I'm going to stand side up, so with the bean bag in my neck, my elbows will be nice and high, twist, and then push, again aiming for above that right leg, okay? So we'll be able to see the back of it when that would be left-handed. So in our neck, elbow nice and high, going to twist all our hips, move our back foot, just to go like that. Okay, third progression on from that, so this is what you really want to be doing when you 
throwing is we're going to have a low stance when we come back. Okay? So if we have a low stance like this, we again, like I was talking about with the jab, we have all this extra movement and this extra power than if we were just stood there like this. Okay? So because I'm right handed, my right foot is going to point kind of into the corner, really. Okay? So I'm going to kind of point into the corner like this. Bean bag goes in my neck and my elbow still remains nice and high. So I'm going to lean, depending on how confident you feel. If you feel quite confident, you can come all the way back here. Okay, but if you're not so confident, here is also fine. Okay, so we're going to go from here. And because we've got this extra bit of momentum, this extra bit of power, we're going to use our legs, we're going to push our legs. Okay, moving our foot just like we did last time. And we've got our shoulders facing the wall once we finish. Alright, so Emily, let's see how we get on with this one. So because she's left hand, she's going to go to the other 